So this is the engine that we're dealing with right here. It's out of a 2004 to 6 liter. Like I said, it had over 200,000 miles on it. Oil pressure was excellent on this thing, so I'm not going to worry about the bottom end, uh, the connected rod bearings or the mains. Everything was good there. Oil pan looked good. Didn't have any kind of uh, uh, didn't have any kind of of shavings or anything inside the oil pan. So I just wanted to kind of show you what I did here. Uh, when I do this, this is what I use here. This big solid rod right here, and then <clears throat> how it works is uh, kind of simple here. We're going to go from this uh, back side back here. You just slide it in there. Of course, that little puck I showed you goes on the end of it, and the new cam bearing goes right there. And then it goes all the way through, and then you have this piece here that aligns it so that you keep it straight. Obviously, you want it to be straight when you're, uh, when you're hammering it. And then you just get you a little hammer, and then you just uh, bang on it a little bit until it pops out, or if you're putting the new ones in, until the new one gets where you need it to be. And then once that's all done, you go on to the next ones, and then it's uh, it's good to go. Uh, like I said, this engine is filthy, it's nasty, it's disgusting. Uh, they're not interested in getting it painted. It's not necessary. It's not going in some kind of cool, nice, beautiful build or anything like that. Um, so, obviously when you see that, that's how it's going to be. And then, you know, you also have clocking these, right? You know, you see the little holes right there? You have them on both sides right there. Uh, you want to clock these just right in the block, and if you can see right there, you actually have a, quite a bit of space to work with right there, and that's going to be the same on every one of them. It's going to be in the same spot. So when you put the cam bearing in there, you want to put the hole there right where it goes, just like that. And then uh, once it goes in there, you know you got it in the right spot. And it's not going to, uh, uh, it's going to oil the cam properly once it's in there and working. A couple other notes I wanted to make while doing this is this right here, your harmonic balancer bolt. It's a 15 16 uh, socket, so it's a fairly decent size socket. And... I used to use these, but I've learned not to. It's cheaper and better and more efficient to just buy the ARP one that has the 12 point and the little washer on it. I've actually had these, even new ones, come out of these blocks, and a lot of other people have too. They will actually come out, even if you use Loctite, even if you put it at the proper torque. I've had them spin out and then it come off, and obviously it could cause a lot of damage, you know, radiator and who knows what. So, don't skimp on that. Get you the ARP one. This customer did. I just put this in here so I can move the block over. And it'll be good to go. And won't have to any of the issues. Another note I wanted to make is the cam retaining plate here. This is a source of oil pressure issues also. So, you see that gasket right there? Doesn't look like it's poking out very much, does it? Well, that's because it's not. You can buy these online very very cheap it comes with the gasket I haven't seen just a gasket before maybe they do maybe there are some packs that do just have this little gasket but you can buy this little plate right here and it's, it's super cheap and it comes with the gasket already in it very well worth it you know it goes right here just like this and you have your oil galleys right here so it just spins and what it'll do is is if it's flat like that and it's not making a good seal it'll leak back into either your timing chain stuff or you know uh, just leak out and obviously that's going to cause you to have oil pressure issues so make sure you buy the camera retaining plate make sure you buy the harmonic balancer bolt the ARP one with the 12 studs on it there uh, and then also you know uh, go with good name brand gaskets quit buying your gaskets from Amazon and eBay for God's sakes it's uh, come on I put I put one in a truck for a guy the other day and I had to charge him again to change out the rear seal because it was leaking Okay, Amazon special. Okay, no. You know, get a reputable brand of gasket and put on here so you don't have to worry about that. It makes a really a big difference. Um, obviously, you know, you check your motor mounts, make sure they're all good. On the LSs, uh, the passenger side tends to be the one that has the most issues. Uh, 
So usually they're the ones that are the most wore out. I always just change them out. Usually I'll have other used ones, which is fine. They don't all have to be new. As long as they have rubber and they're stiff, they're fine. And then just make sure all your surfaces are cleaned. I'm going to hit these surfaces with my little wire wheel uh, to get all the little burrs and all the stuff off and all the nastiness off of them so that when I put the, uh, the new seals on, they seal properly. So I just wanted to give you those couple of little tidbits there, guys. Uh, once again, uh, this I would not say for a, a person who is, you know, an amateur to do the whole cam bearing thing. It's a, it's a bit of a of uh, work. It's a lot of work, as you can see. It's not something you can do in the vehicle, obviously. Uh, but I'm still doing it with the crank in and the heads on. Okay, and that makes it even worse because I can only get my little puck and my cam bearings in through the middle right here where the thrust bearing is. That's the only spot where there's a space. Uh, these counterweights get in the way otherwise. So I have to start from the middle and work my way that way and that way. Uh, so once again, you know, not something I would suggest for if you for a DIY type of deal. But if you take it to a shop or a person that will, you kind of know the process and can, you know, say, okay, hey, I want you to do this, this, and this. And you can make sure, you can look at it and make sure the work's done. Obviously, you know, uh, the new cam bearings are going to look different <laughs> uh, from the old ones. So that ought not be too hard to uh, to see. So I hope this helps y'all out, guys. And I hope that, you know, maybe you can uh, save you a few a little bit of headache, maybe some time in doing this yourself. Maybe this will help decide if you want to do it to your project. Uh, but it's definitely a good idea. I recommend this 100%. Like I said, I will not put a cam in a customer's vehicle unless I put in cam bearings. Uh, if not, they can take it to another shop. There's a whole bunch of them right down the road. Cam bearings get done here if you're getting a new cam. Period. End of story. Um, I hope y'all guys have a good day, good week, and uh, I hope everybody survived in the south. Uh, the storm, storm barrel that came through, uh, going up through, uh, you know, the northeast of the United States now. I hope everybody's fine. I hope you all survived. hope everything's good. Y'all have a great day. Thanks a lot. Ace Customs out.